let's talk a little bit about shopping and how it changes in the era of self-driving electric cars. We're at the very beginning of a dramatic transformation in the way that we get stuff from place A to place B. Now, Amazon has already conditioned us to have super high expectations about when stuff arrives after we order it. Anywhere between two days, which is what they promised Prime users for a lot of the things that you order on Amazon. And now we have Amazon Prime Now, which promises two-hour delivery for a set of things that we order. Now, as we move into a world where planes and trains and automobiles drive themselves, even more profound shifts will happen in the way that we shop for things. Let's explore some of those in this video. Self-driving technology will not only be used for getting us from places A to B. Self-driving technology will disseminate into almost anything that moves where there's an economic incentive to take the driver out of the equation. Couple that with robotic technology, vision recognition, and we're going to see a lot more automation everywhere. So you'll see automatic fruit harvesters. As you think about getting that strawberry to your house, you can imagine the trucks that are involved. Those trucks will be self-driving. We might actually have this intermediate period where the trucks don't drive themselves completely. They mostly drive themselves, but there are certain situations where the self-driving algorithms might not know what to do. And you might have a remote driver like you see in this picture. This is a startup called Starsky Robotics where there's a human driver that gets the truck out of tricky situations where the self-driving algorithms didn't know what to do. You'd imagine this is a transitional technology that will only exist for a number of months or years, but that's probably a new line of work for a set of people for a little while, remote driving cars and trucks. Now imagine that strawberry has gotten out of the truck and into a distribution center. You can imagine a set of robotics getting the strawberries into the right box to either ship to your house or to get to your local grocery store. Amazon has been working for years sponsoring a set of contests that would lead to cost-efficient, very effective, highly accurate box packing robots. So think about the entire supply chain of getting stuff from the factory or the farm all the way to your house. The ships, the trucks, the trains, the last mile delivery sidewalk robots, the robots inside factories, all of these will be self-driving. And the net result of this is that we'll have much more effective, much less costly distribution networks that get things from the factory or the farm to your house. So if it's the case that all the ships and planes and trains and automobiles turn self-driving, one question to ask is, who owns logistics of the future? Quite possibly, it's the existing incumbents, so FedEx and the U.S. Postal Service, with their decades of experience owning and operating these planes and trains and trucks. But it's possible that there's an upstart. It's possible that there is a company that, with software, builds a massive company basically doing routing in the real world. So if Cisco invented routing in the electronic world, maybe there's a new company that knows how to take advantage, because they are digital natives, of all of the underlying automated transport systems that we're going to have, the self-driving cars, the self-driving trains, the self-piloting drones, the self-piloting ships, and gets to invent a brand new company that takes down one of the incumbents. So keep your eye on this space. It's opened up a new opportunity that hasn't existed in decades. Now, if the cost of getting something from the farm or the factory to your house approaches zero, which is the direction that we're headed, what are we going to do with all of the malls? So the malls that remain open will probably convert mostly to services, and that transition has already well underway. We've seen malls turn into self-storage facilities. We've seen them turn into health centers. We've seen malls turn into high schools. And we've seen them turn into places of worship. So malls occupy prime real estate in most cities and suburbs, and we'll get to rethink how we want to use that space to make the cities and suburbs that we live in better places for our community. What happens to impulse purchases that we make at gas stations? Well, we won't need gas stations anymore because the fleet operators will be refueling our cars, that is, recharging them with electricity. So what happens to convenience stores? Now, one thing that might happen to convenience stores is that instead of us going to them, they come to us. Here is a concept from a company called MobiMart that envisions the future of the convenience store as one that comes to you when you punch in an order on your smartphone.
So the world of shopping changes dramatically, and as a result, the world around us will change. We can turn our malls and other places of retail into vibrant spaces to connect and learn from one another. And I'm excited to see the creativity that's going to go into that transition.